Hey, welcome back. This is the second of three videos covering the Hershey AACA Fall Meet, the largest car e really event in the world, drawing people from all over the world. Uh, in this video, I'm just going to walk around the car corral, which is the cars for sale section. So all the cars that I'm showing you are actually for sale, or they were at the time of, uh, of my filming. Uh, anyway, I'll try and give you some prices so you can get a feel for, for what some of the cars are bringing out here and uh, just how much more money you need in your bank account. Anyway, um, I hopefully you enjoy this video. I'll talk to you later. Uh, there's always some big professional uh, car dealers that come in here, uh, in addition to the individuals that are selling cars. Uh, the dealers uh, come in and set up these, uh, these big tents, usually bringing pretty high-end cars uh, with them. Uh, a lot of really nice stuff in here, like this uh, 1934 Packard. They were asking $287,000 for this. Uh, there was also a 1959 Ford Skyliner that I really liked. A nice convertible here for $58,500. This 48 Pontiac Silver Streak for $32,500. Just a really uh, sharp looking paint job on this guy. Here's just a big massive convertible. Uh, this is a 1946 Cadillac. They were asking uh, $58,000 for this. Uh, this is just the very beginning of the Cadillac Dagmar era. Uh, Dagmars are those uh, two protrusions on the front bumper. They got larger in later years. Uh, Dagmars were named after actress Jenny Lewis. Uh, she went by the stage name of Dagmar. Here's a picture of her here. 1981 DeLorean DMC-12 with the gull wing doors. These things are head turners no matter where you go. Uh, although if I owned one, I think I'd get a little tired of the flex capacitor jokes. Uh, anyway, uh, this is parked next to another head turner, a, uh, a 1955 Ford Thunderbird. For $14.9, you can get this 1977 AMC Pacer. Uh, the yellow color is offset by this tasteful yacht paneling. Uh, just a, a wonderful little car with the, uh, I believe those are accessory luggage racks up there. A 1960 Bonneville convertible. And uh, over here we have an Amphicar, 1967 Amphicar. They're asking an even 50,000 for this. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Amphicar, this is actually a amphibious car, Amphicar. Uh, so uh, the whole thing floats in theory, if you've done all your seals correctly. Uh, and it has a little uh, little propeller in the back. Everything is run off of this uh, this rear engine. Uh, that's why it has the the boat uh, license uh, there on the side, so you can uh, drive this right down the ramp. Here with sizable Dagmars, we've got a 1956 Cadillac convertible. Uh, designers uh, earlier on were sort of toying around with the rear engine design, so we've got these sort of faux air intakes kind of worked into the uh, the design. Uh, that became sort of a Cadillac feature for a number of years. 1935 Ford three-window coupe, a uh, 55,000 mile original Survivor. Uh, they're selling here for uh, for 44,000. Or for a little bit less, uh, 39,000, you can have this 1933 Chevrolet Canopy Express truck. Uh, uh, this is set up as a vegetable truck, uh, just a nice car there. Back over to Henry Ford, here we've got a 1936 Cabriolet. Uh, this has been undergone a full restoration and has a Columbia accessory two-speed rear end. They're asking $75,000 for, uh, for this high point restoration. This 1969 GMC is kind of a rare truck. Uh, by rare, I don't mean the, the truck itself, but the condition of it. Uh, this is, seems to be like a really well-maintained original truck that is, is showing its wear, but is still all, you know, serviceable. Uh, generally, uh, when you find trucks out in the wild, they fall into one of two categories these days. Uh, either the really high point restored showpiece or the completely whipped, rusted out work truck. No in between. So this is rare here. Uh, here's an interesting car. This is a 1929 Erskine. Now, uh, Erskine was a Studebaker product. Uh, in 1927, they saw an opportunity for a smaller, less expensive car brand. So they launched the Erskine brand. 
Uh, unfortunately, the following year, Ford came out with a Model A, and they just got crushed. Uh, so by 1930, uh, Studebaker kind of threw in the towel on the Erskine and went on to other things. Uh, this one is a right-hand drive, if you just saw there. Uh, this was made for export and was originally sold in Scotland. Uh, here's the micro car that everybody loves. Uh, this is a 1957 BMW Izetta. Uh, there are no side doors. You get in and out of this thing by swinging open the entire front end there. Uh, steering wheel and all the steering wheels on a little linkage. It looks like a three-wheeler, but it, but it really isn't. There, there are two wheels in the back. They're just uh, really close together. Uh, they're asking $27,000 for that. Um, over here, we've got a uh, 1955 Studebaker uh, three-quarter ton truck. Um, I don't know. I just uh, like uh, orphan trucks. Uh, nice uh, Studebaker here. Here's a 1951 Crosley Farm Old Road. Uh, this is an interesting car. It's sort of Jeep-like, but also was designed to run farm implements that were also sold through Crosley. You can get an optional PTOs on both the front and the back uh, so that uh, you could uh, do farming and also taking it into town. Uh, this particular one has a PTO and they're using it to run a, a little ice cream maker in the back, which is, which is kind of cute. Uh, this is kind of a neat thing for only $7,000. This is a 1911 cutting and only one of three known to exist uh, according to their sign here. Uh, Cutting was a small company that only operated in Jackson, Michigan from 1909 to 1912 before running out of money. But they did uh, enter a couple of cars in uh, the Indianapolis race. This restored example, they're asking $75,000 for it. Speaking of racing, here is a 1959 Jaguar XK140 for sale. Uh, this is a full-on race car with SCCA race history. They had a, a whole uh, book of its history here. Uh, they're asking $95,000 and one penny. Yeah, that's the uh, the actual price. Uh, I, I can't explain it either. Uh, anyway, uh, just a really nice car to see here. Nice 1934 Ford two-door. I always gravitate towards the Fords because they're really pretty looking cars. And uh, over here, uh, 1935, I think, uh, Plymouth. I, uh, I kind of like the Plymouths. I have a 37 Plymouth myself that is a project. Uh, anyway, uh, really nice, uh, nice hood ornament there. Here's a really nicely done Model A Speedster for, uh, for $22,000. Uh, this has the uh, E&J Type 20 lights that I really like. Uh, I think this is a more recent build, uh, just based on the, the paperwork that he had there. But it's a, it's a really nicely done car. It looks, like a, it looks like a really fun car to drive. Honestly, just walking down the row of cars at the uh, car corral is like attending a really good car show, except with the added little feature that everything that you see is for sale. So. Uh, anything that strikes your fancy, like this really super nice uh, Lincoln Mark One, there, uh, it's just a matter of uh, writing a check and uh, you can take it home. Um, uh, just a lot of uh, really nice cars here, like this uh, this Pontiac, um, uh, super nice 1955 or 56 uh, Ford Thunderbird, uh, Ford Bronco. Everybody loves Ford Broncos, especially further down south. Uh, but uh, let's uh, let's take a look at this one here on the end. Uh, this is a uh, 19. 48 Chevrolet Woody Wagon. Uh, this one really is is a nice look, nicely done. Uh, actual uh, actual wood sides, uh, unlike uh, later on when uh, when they'd be sort of metal uh, painted uh, to look like wood. Uh, but uh, this just has a really really nice look to it. Uh, let's take a look inside here. Uh, everything is everything is just perfect about this. Uh, really taken with it. Uh, three rows of seating. Um, it's just a, be a wonderful car to drive. Next up, we've got a 1965 Ford F250. Uh, nicely done. He's asking 15,000 OBO. Uh, but uh, I think that's actually a reasonable price. Usually when you see really nice pickup trucks, they're more expensive than that. 1970 Mustang Mach 1 after that. 
a little bit more expensive than the F-250. They were asking $69,000 for this. Uh, I'm not really sure what uh, what Mustang prices are bringing, but that might be in line for an actual Mach 1. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, it's got the uh, Mach 1 spoiler on the back there. Speaking of sports cars, here's a 1970 Jaguar XKE. Uh, they were asking $69,000 for this. Uh, and uh, then over here, we've got a, uh, a just a massive Packard uh, convertible coupe. I'm not really sure what they were asking for this because I believe it had just been sold. But uh, got that uh, Packard tombstone grill on there. Uh, just a really sharp looking car. And I'm sure that they were not uh, giving this one away. After the Packard comes a 1949 MGTC. Uh, they were asking $29,000 for this. The TC is actually a really desirable uh, model. Uh, this has the really high wire wheels. Uh, right after this, they came out with the TD that had uh, much smaller, more modern looking wheels. So this is sort of the classic MG look here. 1959 Nash Statesman. Uh, three tone paint here that really sets this car off. Uh, we've got uh, the original color blue upholstery in there. Everything is just wonderful, late 50s design. I, I really kind of like the Nash Nashes because they sort of look a little different and off from what you normally see. 1954 Ford Angelica for 18.9. Uh, this one is kind of rare because it's left-hand drive. Um, unlike most Ford Angelicas, this one was actually made for import into the uh, United States. Uh, so this is an American car uh, since it was new. Uh, other Ford Angelicas you see are typically uh, typically right-hand drive imports. Let's take a moment and really appreciate this 1961 a Chrysler station wagon. Uh, they didn't have a price on it, uh, or I didn't see a sign, so I don't really know what they were asking for it. Uh, it doesn't matter. I really couldn't afford it anyway. Uh, but a really nice station wagon with tail fins and uh, that really stylish dog leg in the chrome. Uh, and, uh, we've got the luggage rack up on top. Really catches your oh, eye. Uh, I don't know. If I was going to have a car, this would be a Do nice one. I could really be all about the van life with this thing. This is a 1979 Ford Econoline. Uh, well, that's actually a, a 48 Ford F3. But uh, I really want to talk about this Econoline next to it. This is a Econoline Club Wagon Chateau. Uh, this has 50,000 original miles. Everything on it is 100% original. All of its 1979 glory here. They're asking 24.9, which actually I think is reasonable for something like that. Let's take a look at this 1958 Mercury Turnpike Cruiser. Uh, this is a nice car with flow through ventilation. Uh, you see uh, these little air intakes up here, and uh, then the, that brings the air in and it flows through the car and comes out the rear window, which is a breezeway retractable window. Uh, this has always been one of my favorite cars. Here is a 1960 Vespa for $24,000. Uh, yeah, that is a Vespa. It was designed by Piaggio in Italy, who made the Vespa scooter. And uh, this car was actually made in France by AMAC under license. And uh, it is a little tiny micro car, and that is a two-stroke engine in the back, so you have to mix oil and gas uh, in it, but uh, just a neat little car. What is not a little car is this massive 1956 Cadillac. Uh, yours for only $47,500. Uh, this is a genuine pink Cadillac, but uh, sadly, no crushed velvet seats. 1966 Shelby GT350. Uh, this is not a clone. This is the real deal. Uh, they're asking $249,000 for it. Uh, but uh, this has all of the uh, all of the documentation, VIN numbers, paint codes, everything matches. This is the real thing right here. 
Over here, if you're a little more budget-minded for uh, only uh, $65,000, you can have this 1967 Mustang Fastback. Also a, uh, also a very nice car, but uh, nowhere near the 350. Over here in uh, one of the uh, professional sellers, we have a really fantastic looking 1935 Auburn. Uh, no price is listed on these things, but looks like a uh, looks like an older restoration or perhaps a well-worn original. Fantastic car. Uh, they've also have this uh, 1953 uh, BMW here and a uh, 1956, I think, uh, Morgan. Uh, you don't really see Morgans too much. Uh, over here, we have a, a 1950 uh, Chrysler Town and Country uh, with the with the wood trim. I've always kind of liked these. Uh, the 1950 Chryslers, I always thought were a little boxy, but the Town and Country I like. Here is a 1960 Porsche Junior. Yeah, yeah, you heard me right. That is a Porsche. Uh, Porsche uh, made, or actually I think still makes, uh, tractors. Uh, over here we've got a, uh, a 1983 Lamborghini Countach. And uh, then over next to that we've got a 1903 Schost, or Schacht. I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. It seems like a, some kind of a German name. Schacht High Wheeler. Uh, all for sale. Uh, sadly, no prices on any of these. But let's go back and take a look at that uh, Lamborghini Countach uh, from 1983. If uh, you were anywhere near a teenager in the 1980s, you had a poster somewhere that had one of these cars on it. Beautiful car. A 1949, I think, uh, Mercury. Um, these are just uh, the iconic car that everybody loves. I didn't really used to like them because I have this weird personality where, like, if everybody loves something, I'm, like, already predisposed to not like it. Until one day I just sat in one of these things and looked around and just immediately fell in love. Uh, 1955 Pontiac Star Chief. Uh, this is the, the last year for the Pontiac Hood Chrome. Uh, in this case, uh, split into uh, two little suspenders there. We've got a uh, really nice Z28. And uh, then over here, we've got a 1969 Mercury Cyclone GT. 1935 Chrysler Imperial Airflow, top of the line here for Chrysler. Uh, this is Chrysler's uh, first attempt at introducing really aerodynamic styling into, into the car industry. Uh, unfortunately, it never really caught on in 1935. People, uh, people just didn't like it. Uh, they uh, uh, thankfully had a more uh, standard style car and, uh, and quickly uh, phased out the, uh, the airflow. Uh, anyway, uh, I always kind of liked them. I really like this 1970 Pontiac Le Mans wagon. had uh, had really great patina and uh, mechanically really sound. A 1989 uh, Jeep Wagoneer uh, with wood sides. Speaking of wood sides, here's a uh, 1940 uh, Chevrolet. Uh, they were asking 85 for that. 1906 Model F uh, touring car. Uh, they didn't have a price on that, but that has a uh, has a two cylinder engine. Uh, not a lot of brass cars for sale in the car corral. Uh, those are mostly for sale over in the uh, flea market area for some reason. I'm not really sure why. 1958 Ford Ranch Wagon. Uh, they claim it's uh, fairly rare, which uh, it might be. I'm not really familiar with the Ranch Wagon. Uh, looks like they're asking $25,000 and are, are open to offers. I think that's actually a very reasonable price for a wagon. I'm going to kind of wrap things up here with this 1935 Ford Phaeton. Very nice car. They're asking $44,500. We also have a 1935 Auburn, Auburn here. Uh, they're asking $139,000 for that. So that was the Hershey AACA Fall Meet car corral, or at least a small portion of the cars that were for sale there. Hopefully you enjoyed that a little bit. Uh, tune into my next video where I'm actually going to be doing the AACA car show, which is a world-class car show. They have some really nice cars there. 
uh, I look forward to sharing them with you and maybe telling you a couple of stories. Anyway, uh, please uh, remember to subscribe and, uh, and like and go look at my other videos. Anyway, it's all entertainment all around here. So I'll talk to you later. Bye.